So I just got done with round eight of the Abu Dhabi Masters Tournament. And as usual, uh, it's dinner time. So I try and keep this as brief as possible. But it was a really fun game. And I got to use an opening, which I've been preparing for the last month to two months uh, that I've never played before in an over the board classical game. Um, so I was playing a uh, young player, FM Almar Atakashiev from Azerbaijan. And I was expecting him to play the Catalan, which is a very popular opening these days. And I opted for a line in this position, um, which is super, super rare. If you see the Masters database, uh, I played one of the most rare moves here, pawn h6. Yeah, this is a line I, I've i seen played a handful of times. It's been played in like the, uh, what was it? The Summer Classic at St. Louis Chess Club by JJ Ali Mirandi. And there's been a few other players that have been using this line, actually, including Magnus Carlsen. Uh, Magnus won a really nice game against Laquan Liam. Um, and the point of h6 is to remain flexible, but to also employ a setup with bishop d6, and then if white were to play knight c3 here, the plan is to play knight c6. And then usually black goes for takes and a quick e5. And h6 is useful in, in preventing bishop g5. So the main line is uh, b3, takes, takes, and e5. And this is a game between Magnus and Laquang Liam. Uh, Magnus playing black uh, won, won a nice game, uh, equalized pretty easily, and then uh, ground down the endgame. So we didn't quite go into this. And I'll admit that I didn't do too much specific preparation uh, for my opponent because I couldn't find any games where he played against this line. So I wasn't entirely sure what to expect. But we did get this position and he played the move queen c2, which is one of the options for white. It defends upon. And then rather than playing knight c6 and going for the same plan, uh, I go for uh, a slightly different plan is b6 just to very solidly complete development with bishop b7 and knight d7. And that's essentially what happened. Uh, we both complete development. And then very soon, there became a lot of pawn tension in the center. And no one really wanted to relieve the tension. Uh, the pawn stayed like this for the next few moves after rook c1, queen e7, queen b1, rook d8. Yeah, it was a very tense position. Um, I was still trying to move quickly, like even though this wasn't specific preparation, uh, the move seemed very natural. And maybe one alternative was to take on d4, but after knight takes d4, the move I want to play is e5, but that runs into knight f5, and also have to watch out for knight b5, bishop b8, bishop a3 ideas. So I really didn't want to relieve the tension, because I think either capture helps play to improve. Uh, so finally, my opponent uh, took a pawn on d5. I take back, and then e3 was played. So structure transforms a little bit. I play queen e6. Nice move, improving the queen. I was anticipating some like eventual knight h4 to f5 idea. And actually, after queen e6, my opponent did play knight h4. So now the queen is a bit better placed on e6, where it's not a target uh, of knight f5. And I think this move may have been a, a small mistake uh, just because of my next move, knight e4. Uh, but the position just gets really sharp, and I wasn't entirely sure what exactly is going on. Uh, but here my opponent took a super, super long think and eventually played knight takes e4. We can see uh, the timestamps are accurate, so from an hour and one minute down to 38 minutes. And um, when I played knight e4, I was aware that my opponent could go for this line. After takes, uh, he played d5, and this is a a pawn sacrifice and I didn't think it was so dangerous at first but uh, it turned out to be a bit tricky because after bishop takes d5 it looks like I have everything under control but he has a really uh, resourceful move bishop h3 deflecting my queen away from defending my bishop I'm essentially forced to take on h3 and after rook d5 uh, there are definitely some problems to solve for black given that this pawn is hanging, the bishop's hanging, and white has a lot of pressure from various directions. 
So things seemed a little bit unstable, but next few moves I just try and consolidate. Brought the queen back to defend everything. Rook d1 and bishop to c7. And then after knight f5, I play f6. Uh, had to just obstruct the, the diagonal. Uh, maybe there was some alternative here, although I think f6 is pretty much forced. Because if knight f6, then what was I scared of? I think just bishop f6. And ah, yeah, there's a, a funny trick that if takes, 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 uh, this just loses for black because of the, the triple fork. So I play f6, trying to blunt the power of the bishop. And then my opponent plays knight d6. And I think this is just a, a liquidating move. I essentially have to take, and after takes queen to e7, I'm still up a pawn, but after queen c2, white is ready to play queen d2, forming the triple battery on the d file. And I didn't see anything better other than to give back the pawn and just to neutralize everything. I played knight f8, we trade rooks, uh, all the rooks come off the board, and then queen takes e4. Um, and finally, the dust has settled, and we're in uh, a relatively quiet endgame, but still imbalanced. It's uh, it's queen and knight versus queen and bishop. Uh, I have the queen side majority, which is maybe some small edge for black, uh, because I can more easily create a pass pawn. And generally, queen and knight just are working better together over queen and bishop. So I thought I, I still have some winning chances here. And... Uh, yeah, around here, my opponent offered me a draw, but uh, I figured there's no risk in, in playing on. Um, just made simple improving moves, king f7. Uh, and then he plays b4, which uh, I think is trying to force matters to um, get rid of my, my c5 pawn, so maybe the bishop can access d4. And I take, takes, and I play a5. Um, so I'm trying to eventually make a pass pawn on the queen side. But after bishop c3, knight c5, queen c4 check, queen e6, I would have been really happy with a queen trade here. Uh, even though I lose uh, the queen and knight versus queen and bishop in balance, uh, this would just lead to an endgame where I, th I think black is really close to winning because my king is much closer to the action and uh, the pawns are ready to march down and white has really no active play against these pawns on the king side. So... Uh, he avoided the queen trade and played queen to b5. And this is where I took a, a very long think, trying to figure out the, the, the move that gives me the most chances in the position. Initially, what I wanted to do was to take the a pawn uh, and allow this trade. But I don't think this leads to much for black. And I also have to be careful. Like I wanted to go for a move like knight e4, but this just loses a knight due to the double attack. And then if knight d3, white has all these annoying checks. And this might also be losing for black. Not entirely sure, but like if check, or king f8 check, and then queen d7 might be coming. This might lead to a draw somehow, like some weird perpetual. So I am threatening to take on f2. But I didn't want to go into that line. And there was another move I was looking at after queen b5. But my brain is kind of just mashed potatoes right now, uh, which actually sounds kind of appetizing. So uh, let's see what, what ended up happening. I played king to g6, um, trying to run away from the potential checks. And then uh, this allowed bishop takes a5. Uh, my opponent was getting pretty low on time. And we got into this ending. The minor pieces came off the board. I played queen takes a2. And now we're in a position where it's still equal pawns, but I'm still the one playing for a win because I have the outside passer. And it's a question, can white somehow force perpetual? And the answer is no. After check, king to h7, check, king h8. After queen c8, I have the very uh, nice move queen g8. And I avoid the perpetual. Uh, but the problem is my queen gets really passive. And after queen c6, it's really hard to actually advance, advance a pawn. And um, I mean, ideally, I want to get the queen to b4, but then white will start having more annoying checks. So I started with queen b8. And after king g2, queen e5, centralizing the queen, 
um, defending the pawn, attacking white's pawn, controlling e8. So I thought this was a nice square for the queen, but after g4, uh, it was just really hard to make progress, and I played the only idea in the position that I could find was queen to g5, hitting the pawn, but my opponent very simply plays f3, and uh, this just offers a trade. If uh, if takes on e3, then white's going to win the a pawn, and this would just be a draw. So um, I decided to go back to e5, but then after queen c8, king h7, white just has uh, basically a perpetual check. Uh, there's no escaping the checks, and if I do try and escape, then white's going to win the pawn, and didn't see anything better than to repeat. I was considering f5, but I think this is just not necessary if f5 just takes, and I, I don't see how black can play for a win here. Um, so I played king h8, offered a draw, and my opponent accepted. And that was round eight. Um, an interesting game, and uh, I'm super curious what the engine thinks about this game, but I'm also super hungry. So what I'm going to do is leave a link to the Lee Chess study where I'm saving all my games. And if you want to analyze and see everything that was was done wrong this game and see what Stockfish thinks is best, uh, feel free to analyze on your own. But it's dinner time and there's a morning round tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, it's currently after 9 p.m. So food and sleep is now the priority. Goodbye.